Hey guys, it's Peyton and we are going to go to my friend Paul's house from the Nashville Armory to go do some shooting outdoors. It's a beautiful day and I'm excited to be able to run some drills with just uh, shooting some ARs and some holster training. So let's get to it. Safety. Shoot. Safety. Box. Six. Come on. So I'm a huge, huge, huge proponent of dry fire drills. And when people first get into shooting, when they hear about dry fire, it's like, oh, this is tedious or this is boring. I don't want to do this. Five minutes a day, five days a week, everybody can afford 25 minutes a week. Maybe you skipped Monday. Okay, do it 10 minutes on Tuesday, but this can save your life. It's like, I often ask my students, hey, do you have a life insurance policy? Do you have a life insurance policy? Do you know if it works? Sure. No, do you know? You won't know. No. You won't know. So the way I look at this, uh, learning firearm skills, learning medical skills, it's a life insurance policy that if you invest your money and time in and it works, you get to live. Or somebody else might get to live. You know, you might be able to save somebody else. So investing just a little bit of time goes a long way. And the cool thing about dry fire training, you don't have to go to a range, especially if you have an indoor range. I love indoor ranges because they make it easy for people in the city to shoot, but you're still breathing in lead and cadmium and heavy metals and whatnot. And once in a while, not a big deal. But it's loud, right? It's expensive. Dry fire training is free. You just need to have a firearm. And when you get into more advanced stuff, some snap caps. So what we're going to do today is uh, we're going to run through things that I do for dry fire training. So we both have gone over stance and stuff. I'm going to stand right in between you, or rather, see here. Yeah. Let's trade. Yeah. Both of you guys trade. So my sister is a lefty, okay. and you are a righty. Oh, okay. Now, the reason we're in my kitchen is because instead of taking the time every day, the idea is to be efficient with this stuff, mm -hmm. right? So most people in their kitchen have cupboards, and they either have knobs or handles on all their cupboards. So for me, these are multiple targets so I can stand in one spot and shift my aim to multiple different spots. Mm -hmm. So first thing, when we're dry fire practicing, we are practicing our stance, all right? We're practicing our draw stroke, all right? We're practicing our grip, we're practicing our presentation, we're practicing our sight picture, focusing on that front sight post, making sure that it's nice and crystal clear, the target is blurry and the rear sight is blurry, that we have equal height, equal light, mm -hmm. right? We're practicing it. Now, first off, triple, triple, triple check because you're in your home and you don't want to send a round through the drywall into your neighbor's house. Excellent. And if you're training with other people, it's just good to have the redundancy to say, hey, buddy, check. Mm -hmm. Clear? 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 Clear. Awesome. So, and then what I do is I'm going to, we can incorporate a bunch of different things. First, we're going to do the whole thing. Remember the scan? Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to do everything. So we're going to take our time. Let's go through the numbers. All right, so I'm going to say the numbers first. Then I'm going to have you say the numbers. Then I'm going to have Jenny say the numbers. Okay. By the way, folks, Jenny's my sister visiting for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Why don't we have you step forward a little bit? Have you step back just a little bit? There we go. Now everybody's in frame. Okay, so the first thing we do for number one is we are going to step forward into our good stance, standing on our railroad tracks. Ha <laughs> ha, lefty. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. we're going to be hinging slightly forward, and our hand is going to give ourselves a home. Now, that's what we do with an outside waistband holster, or uh, outside waistband, uh, yep. Yeah. But we're going to add an extra step here. So when we give ourselves a home, we're going to remove the garment and reach down and push down on our pistol. The reason we're pushing down on the pistol, we're getting high up on the back strap and we're making sure we have a nice secure grip right off the bat. All right, so let's start over again. For number one, we're stepping forward, raising the garment while keeping our hands there, that's our home, pushing down on the holster. Okay, two, we're going to draw and point. Now we're all appendix carrying, so notice I'm pointing almost kind of gangster style, right? The idea is just to get the muzzle on the target as fast as possible for number two. In case we have to shoot from right here at point blank range, we can and then back up and get our good grip. So for number two, we just draw and point. Three, we're gonna rotate it up to our workspace, that monkey with a symbol. We get a good support hand grip up on there. All right, that's number three. Number four, we're gonna drive it up into our eye line while keeping our head up, hinging slightly forward, elbows out. Both of you look great. 
Number five, we focus on that front side pole, so we're going to pull the trigger back. Boom. Finger up on the frame. All right, then we're going to compress into our body, and we're going to do a rangeism scan. Do you remember why it's called a rangeism scan? No, I don't remember why, but I know what it is. Okay. The reason we call it a rangeism, anytime we call something a range ism it's just something that we modify specifically for being on a range okay. since my parents are in the other room yeah. my brother-in-law is behind me we're going to keep and nobody's that way we're going to keep our muzzles in that direction we're in a real life threat my muzzle is going to come with me when i scan unless i'm going by somebody right yeah. so we're just going to look to our left jay's going to look to our right first then we're going to look to our right then we're gonna scan the target one more time. When we scan the target, we don't look at our sights again. We look right over the top of the gun because we are scanning that threat to make sure they are no longer a threat. So we're no longer looking at our sights, we're looking right over them, focusing on the target. All right, then we're gonna bring it in and holster up. Yeah, I forgot to do the numbers for that one. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start over and do the numbers real quick here. We're just gonna do this a couple times. All right, one, step forward, give your hand to home, raise your garment, put your hand down your gun. Two is really simple. Two is draw the point. Three, we're going to rotate the gun, get our support hand on it while still keeping it in our workspace. Number four, we're going to drive it up into our eye line. Five, we have a perfect sight picture. We go ahead and pull the trigger button. Boom, 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 boom. Six, finger up on the frame. We're going to compress. Seven, we're going to do that scan. And we're scanning for other threats, we're scanning for any injured, we're scanning to make sure our environment is safe, so we know where our family is, and then we come back and scan that target one more time to make sure they're no longer a threat. All right, eight, we bring it in and holster up. We watch as we holster, especially if we're concealed carry holster, in case we're wearing an undergarment, we don't want any clothing or anything to get in the way of the trigger guard. Uh -huh. All right, you ready to call the numbers? Yes. All right. Okay, one. Two, three, four, five, six, wait, six, right. okay, seven, eight, nine, wait, nope. I think it's seven. all good. Yeah. So it's confusing when you start out because it's not like each movement has a number, yeah. it's each step. Okay. has a number and Got each it. step has multiple movements or just a little. And the reason I do that is because we can do one all day. Just yeah. one. Right? One. And then two is a separate, it's like an escalation in the okay. draw. Two is right. So even though there's a bunch of stuff, especially from concealed carry going on for number one, I'm stepping. I'm grabbing my garment. I'm giving my hand to home while I remove my garment. I'm putting my hand down on my pistol. Those are like four separate things, but it's okay. still step number one because they it. all happen at the same time. And so I break them down because it's different escalations of the draw okay. and different stages of the draw. Mm -hmm. All right. So, want to do it one more time? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, nope, just oh, seven, seven is all the scan. Now eight's holster up. Eight. All good. For just a couple of minutes, I come in and then we can add some different steps to it um, as far as like stepping off to the side, mm -hmm. all right? And I'm not gonna do the scan this time. I'm gonna practice trigger reset or uh, squeezing the trigger. So just, okay, there's my target right there. It's the second cupboard above my microwave with the little handle on it and I'm going to Go ahead, draw, present. Oh, you know what? I didn't rack my gun yet. There we go. So I'm just going to draw, present, push it up there. As soon as I have a perfect sight picture, that's when I squeeze the trigger. Then I bring it in, and then all of a sudden, oh, no, this cupboard's looking at me kind of weird. I want to... All right. So we're going to come back here. And so all I'm doing right now is I'm still practicing my stance. I'm still practicing my footwork. I'm still practicing my presentation and everything. I'm skipping the scan, and what I'm going to be doing is practicing the trigger squeeze with sight picture. I don't pull the trigger until I have a perfect sight picture. And that, the more you practice this, okay, boom, the second this comes in crystal clear, and this gets blurry, and that gets blurry, and they're all lined up, I squeeze the trigger. And that's going to mean when you go to the range, or if you have to do a self-defense shooting, you're going to be that much quicker because you've practiced your eyes. You practice focusing quickly, focusing quickly, picking everything up. So... And notice I'm kind of pivoting and just shifting my stance every time. 
Elbows out. There, there we go. Is. Yep. There you go. Now pick a different one. And this is this is great. So what we're doing right now is we're kind of slapping the trigger. Okay. All right. Go ahead, push it out. Put your finger on the trigger. Go ahead, slowly find the wall on the trigger. Okay. Are you at the wall? Yes. Okay, now don't don't go fast or anything. Just break the wall. Just bring it. That's it. Okay. And instead of coming off really quick, just gently take your finger off and then put it up on top. And then okay. we're going to work on trigger reset the next time we train together. All right. But for now, just present. Put your finger on the trigger. And then just gently break the wall. Now, the more you do this, the easier it's going to be to um, not anticipate recoil. Elbows out a little bit more. Elbows out. There. Right there. There we go. Now, finger up on the frame before you compress. Okay. And this is great. This is practice, right? You've only been doing this for a little while, so this is the time to make mistakes, or rather to learn the proper way to do it. So finger up on the frame, then compress. And I I like to do these motions like the one, two, three, like, you know, your Mr. Uh -huh. Robata or whatever. So when I'm out here, right, boom, the first thing that happens, I'm going to turn for the camera, boom, I put my finger up on the frame, then I bring it in. Okay. So. So nice and gentle with that trigger pull. So the goal is if your front sight post moves as you pull the trigger, that means you did not hit what you were aiming at. That's it right there. And it's okay not to be super fast right off the bat. Okay. The more you do this, the more efficient you'll get. And when you get more efficient, you'll become quicker. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna do two more and then we'll have Jenny pop up there. So. Excellent. Now this time, Present with one eye shut. Now open both eyes. Now squeeze. Is that weird? Yes. <laughs> Does it look like there's two front side posts? Yeah, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Okay, so let's practice that again. Go ahead, push it out. Elbows out. And shut your left eye. Shut your left eye. Okay, you're focusing on that front side post with your right eye. Now open your left eye and observe. Does it look weird? Mm, it's, I think it's on, but I don't really know. Okay, now shut your left eye again. Open your left eye. Shut your left eye. Okay, she's lined up perfectly. Yeah. Open your left eye. Squeeze. There we go. I'm bringing it in. So the goal is to eventually shoot with both eyes open. Okay. Go ahead, stand as close to that dishwasher as you can and look this way. This isn't going to be the best example because my kitchen isn't huge. It's a fairly, fairly sized kitchen, but <laughs> this direction is not that big. So look straight ahead. Shut your straight ahead. Straight ahead. Straight, there we go. Shut your left eye. Let me know when you see me. Okay. Okay, see how close I got to yeah. you? Open both eyes. Look straight forward. Don't look at me. Look straight forward. Let me know when you see me. I see you. <laughs> so the reason, okay. main reason we want to learn how to shoot with both eyes open is just our situational awareness is okay. so much better. Yeah, cool. that makes sense. You want to try the dry fire quick? Sorry. All right, slow down, slow down, slow down. Take your time. Get it rack. Yeah. Okay. Finger up on the frame. There you go. Bring it in your body. Okay, now rack it. Okay. Finger up on the frame. Bring it in. Now get your elbows in a little bit more. Okay. Now you're learning all sorts of new stuff, so not everything's going to be perfect, and that's okay. That's why we're doing this. Go ahead, drive it out. Knees bent slightly. There we go. Okay. Excellent. Finger up on the frame. Compress. Okay. Rack it. Okay. Pick another target. What's going on with that finger? Which one? There you go. Oh. <laughs> it's wandering. Okay. Now, same thing. You're kind of slapping the trigger a little bit. So go ahead. Bring it in. Rack your gut. All right. Pick that cover. I'll pick the next one. Okay, drive it up. All right, now put your finger on the trigger, find the wall. Now just gently break the wall. I bet you do Ah, I see your yeah. Yeah, let me show you real quick. Want me to do it left-handed? Yes. All right, so I'm going to push it out there. I'm going to do it one-handed, all right? Just like that. See what I'm doing? Now, your wall is a little bit harder. We yeah. should, I'm either going to get you a shield bus or I'm going to get you an apex trigger. Apex trigger will make a lot 
easier. Yeah, that's a lot harder wall here, Travis. Let me get spoiled with this. Turn on trigger. Or, I'm sorry, I need to go. Oh, that's nice. Bring it in, rack it. Okay. That's an easier rack. Finger bump, right? <laughs> yeah, the smaller pistols, smaller concealed carry guns, you are sacrificing sometimes ease of use mm -hmm. and a uh, snappy recoil for the ability to carry it. Yeah. So. Cool. Okay. All right, folks. So I cannot recommend enough getting, let's see that autofocus, getting some dummy rounds. So I have a couple different kinds here. I have the A-Zoom snap cap. These are maroon aluminum ones and they have a little gel insert in the back where the primer should be. Then uh, these guys, you can get them, uh, usually they're green or orange. You can get them on Amazon. You can get even more than the, than the snap caps or the A-Zooms. Um, these are just dummy rounds, they're inert dummy rounds, and here's an all plastic one. They all have advantages and disadvantages, but it doesn't really matter when you're starting out. 100% get at least five dummy rounds. There's tons of different things you can do for training with them. And if you want to see some of that training, uh, we're going to continue to work together, but also check out Thunder Punk Radio. We have a bunch of training stuff on. That's uh, my YouTube channel with a couple of my homies. And uh, yeah, get some dummy rounds, folks. Train, train, train.